Mike's oh, okay. here. Yeah. Um, all right. So I want to um, demo my travel time map of Toronto. So I made like a heat map that shows you how fast you can go. Your camera. Yeah. Um, how fast you can go using public transit uh, anywhere else. So uh, there's a little demo here. And just from like the picture, you can see where line one starts and ends. And where line two is, there, like, Toronto is marked by a big cross, uh, which is where basically tra the transit corridor is. Um, you can change stuff like, for example, if we don't allow the up express, then uh, large sections along Weston or the uh, Pearson disappear because up express is very fast <laughs> and very frequent. Um, you can change. Um, like the starting location too. So for example, if you live near High Park, then you can see which areas are most accessible by High Park. And it's not necessarily like the distance on a map um, because for example, this part is way fast, uh, it's way more accessible than somewhere like here with no subway line. Um, I think that's another cool feature is that it also shows you the routes and um, like what times you need to get on and get off the subway to reach. Um, there's other things, for example, this is how far you can get using 40, in 45 minutes, right? But if you were to increase it to um, like one hour and 20 minutes, and suddenly we can see that uh, Toronto's public transit is actually pretty good. And even those connections to um, like YRT, Brampton, my way, we can reach really far um, in like one hour and 20 minutes, right? Um, okay. So uh, there will be more demos later, but I just wanted to get into um, why I built this. So, Looking for cheap housing with good transit is really hard. And um, when I was trying to find co-op housing last year in Toronto, I found myself going through all the listings. Uh, I found myself going through all the listings and uh, like manually searching about them up on Google Maps to see which uh, like apartment was the best. And if you live in Toronto, you know that the farther away it is, sometimes it's actually closer because if it's on line one or if it's on line two or if there's an express school train. Um, and I wish that there was a map that let me see which areas were most accessible. Um, there are existing solutions. Uh, they're called isochrone maps, but they're really bad <laughs> and they're paid and um, they don't support multiple agencies. They don't support times more than 15 minutes. So I, want, I, I wanted to build my own. Um, Okay, how it works. So all the agencies publish their schedules in a GTFS format, which is also uh, what Google Maps uses. Uh, GTFS has stuff like routes, uh, where the stops are, each individual trip and like potential connections between in the station. Um, and using a computer program, um, you sort of do it, uh, you sort of spawn like a, lots of people who get on a random bus and then they go ride that bus and get off at all stops. And then from that, when they get off, they get on another random bus. And then you repeat and repeat, and then you mark uh, when you get off, mark the time when you arrive, right? Um, and if you do that so that you reach the entirety of Toronto, then um, you get a map similar to this one, right? Um, so if you're familiar with computer science, it's also breadth for search. Um, and then from, the stop arrival times. So we know when we arrive at Union or Bloor or Finch Station. Um, we also have to calculate the times for each road segment, right? So from each station, uh, we spawn another person who walks around randomly, uh, walks all roads and then uh, calculate when they reach that road, right? Um, to visualize it, um, I use uh, JavaScript and Mapbox, which is a really good library. So uh, where else started? <laughs> I first uh, made this app in December 2022 when looking for co-op housing. And before, um, I didn't know how to visualize it. So this is fully visualized using QGIS, uh, which is like an open source uh, GIS tool. And it's pretty bad um, because it, QGIS was not made for this, right? And I thought it was cool enough that uh, it would be worth developing like my own like visualizer, um, which I just started working on. So. Um, why is this map useful? So as a student, uh, it lets you see where you can explore without a car. Um, Go Transit goes to some pretty nice places um, that, that are <laughs> good weekend trip. Um, allows you to see closest park, groceries, uh, where to meet. And as a transit agency, it allows you to see 
the impact of a delay or a closure on one line. And I want to show you, uh, for example, we can turn off different modes, like what happens if we didn't allow subway. Um, for example, line two was closed and suddenly um, the accessibility map just reduces insignificantly, right? So you were standard, stranded at Hyde Park and line two was down. This is what you'd be able to reach, right? If you're lucky and live here, um, there is a go, go train apparently, or there is the Up Express. Um, but other than that, you're probably stranded, right? Or, um, as an example, like for example, we turn off the bus. Um, here, you're only allowed to use subway. And if we uh, don't allow Google Transit, then the, like, uh, it's subtle, but the farther away areas are not accessible anymore. So, uh, if you go from Union, so Go Transit serves areas outside the city, right? Um, this helps transit agencies, for example, when they face budget cuts or when they're trying to um, argue for m more money to fund a new line. Um, this allows agencies to show that people in all these areas are being served and will be impacted by um, changing the frequency of a line, right? Um, it's not implemented yet, but it's very easy. It's to see how a new line of frequent buses would change people's commute. So for example, um, um, the new Eglinton line is not on here, but it would be very easy to add and sort of visualize the difference of how the Eglinton line would affect uh, people along the corridor and along other aspects too. Uh, see which neighborhoods need more service. Um, for example, down here, um, even though it looks close to the center of Toronto on a map, it's very hard to access because there's no buses or subways running. Um, so I just want to introduce, um, this was a side project, but I'm also working on uh, a company that does some like transit uh, analytics for, uh, for example, this is the city of Barrie. And um, the real life applications of what I'm doing here are that, um, so for example, the shaded blue area is the, um, service area for bus 2B in Barrie. And these numbers are calculating um, how many people are served within a, a five minute or, uh, walk from a bus stop, right? And from these calculations, um, City of Barrie can use this to uh, like influence routes or uh, like argue for more funding or more frequency. Um, I also was lucky enough to help build this uh, like real time um, bus map for Brampton uh, which shows like which buses are delayed and where the buses are like right now. Um, so uh, my work at this company helped me build this transit map and this transit map helped me build my work at this company. So I'm very lucky for that. Um, there are future goals. Um, I'd love to develop this further. I think uh, it has a great potential for being integrated into a housing or rental site. Um, I'm sure that I, my problems I faced of going on Google Maps and searching the commute are problems that are faced by many people. And Google, Facebook Marketplace has transit score, but I don't know what transit score means. <laughs> it has walk score, but I don't know what walk score means, right? I care about the minutes that it takes to get to my office or groceries. Um, and I think uh, this app is one of the few ones that do that. I think it can also um, help city planners or transit planners see uh, which neighborhoods are lacking public transit or simulate new lines or line closures. Um, I'm also open to any other uses. Uh, message, message me on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Any questions? Uh, awesome, thank you. Um, so uh, we do questions kind of like we do introductions. Uh, we like to make sure that uh, folks online and in the room are, are sort of having equal access to questions. So um, we'll we'll start with a question in the room, but if you're online and want to ask Henry a question, um, feel free to throw a cue in the chat and we'll go kind of like one, one question in the room, one question online, kind of back and forth. Um, so does anyone have a question for Henry in the room? Got one here. Uh, yes, it, it, is it free open source? Yeah, it's um free and open source. <laughs> um, so, well, the source code is not really readable, Um, but yes, so it is on GitHub, and it is completely free for you to use. Oh, cool. 
<laughs> it's map.henryn.ca. It's on, on GitHub? It's on GitHub. Okay, cool. Cool, Can thank you. Debian, I guess. Yes. Uh, wonderful. Uh, questions on line queue? We currently have two lined up. First from John. Thank you. Um, looks great. Um, uh, excellent, uh, excellent technical uh, presentation. Uh, I'm assuming it, it occurred to me that uh, when you were talking that it would be possible to uh, adapt this um, this this uh, program to uh, work with with uh, bicycle uh, bicycle accessibility as well, particularly levels of 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 Based on people's comfort with, say, riding on on um, ma major roads, minor roads, and roads in between, um, and I see that it's also open source, so possibly that could be looked into. Yeah, I think that'll be, I think that'll be a great idea. Um, because. <laughs> really common because I'm also a really I'm a fan of biking especially in Vancouver and um, it's really common for me just to route along the easy route um, which with green lines and it'll be really cool to see like which areas are more bike accessible um, along popular bike routes and then favor bike routes more than routes with cars or uh, favor routes with 30 kilometers an hour traffic more than uh, big route roads. Yeah, I think that would be a very cool idea. <laughs> awesome, thanks, John. Uh, another question in the room? Uh, yeah, first of all, that's a really cool project. Man. Thank you. Uh, it is. <laughs> and my question is that, did you get to verify um, those mission? Yeah, yeah, so like if you go on, I verified it using Google Maps um, and the, the routes match Google Maps. So sometimes Google Maps, um, for example, this is a one minute transfer at 125th Street Station. Um, my app does not know how big 125th Street Station is. So sometimes it's not possible to transfer within one minute. Uh, Google Maps knows that. Um, for example, Union Station, it's very hard to make like a 30 second transfer. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, so my app doesn't have that, but Google Maps does. But generally, yeah, it matches that of Google Maps. So, so you're basing it off of all now. Well, I, I'm calculating all myself, but I'm checking the correctness by doing a few routes on Google Maps and checking it matches. Uh, I think there were some more questions online too. Yes, uh, next question online comes from Heba. Um, I just had the same thoughts as John about the bike applications and yeah, it's a really cool app. Bike version. <laughs> cool, uh, were there other questions online too? Yes, the next one is from Curtis. I'm not sure if Curtis wants to read it or I'll read it. Um, Curtis asks, did you create it as a company project? No, so uh, I created this before I joined the company, but uh, after joining, uh, I used some of the experiences and the things I learned to help make it better. But this is fully independent. Cool. Other questions in the room? Yeah, I just quickly browsed your review. Mm, uh, you said uh, you load the, the data files from Mapbox. Yeah. Yes. So what happens when you do the data search to you? Do you update that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, because this was a side project and I didn't want to spend too much money on hosting, um, the roads data is um, I uploaded to like a instead of using a database, it's a uh, static files, right? So roads data um, changes very slowly, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but the dynamic data, for example, like the transit schedules are not loaded. So they're loaded dynamically. And in sorry, interesting enough, um, right now the data is old from um, like January or something. Uh, so I still have to implement like dynamically loading new GTFS, uh, which coincidentally is a project <laughs> I worked on at the company. So the problems are the same. Uh, 
Uh, we've got another question in the room. I told Dr. Uh, I noticed you have a lot of these things that are Yeah. Which I, I find was, I think, interesting. Like, you know, you have Can we get the mic closer to the speaker? Well, yeah, I, I was just going to restate the question. Okay. Don't worry. But, well, in market, like, say, a market Ontario, like, I spoke like, with like, the yeah, this kind of data, like, so the question was about whether or not Henry has uh, tried looking at applying sort of this kind of application to some smaller cities uh, versus just sort of major metropolitan centers. Um, yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I, I chose these cities because I have been to them and I think that they're really cool. Like, for example, Montreal, um, Montreal's transit system is really cool. <laughs> Um, but like, if you know a smaller transit transit agency who uh, this would be helpful for, I'd love to work on something like that too. A uh, couple of small questions online. John is asking if you drop your GitHub URL into the Zoom chat. Yes. Um, it's it's there. Oh, it's there already. Okay. Oh yes. Thank Thanks, Q. Uh, other questions online, Q. Um, online question from myself, actually. I wanted to know, have you considered overlaying um, transit access, walkability access scores, et cetera, um, with this, with your visualization? Mm, so the hypothesis is that transit access and walkability match. So places with transit access are more walkable. Um, it's cool. Um, but it's a lot of work. I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, personally, I'm not interested in, in that data, so I haven't implemented it. Okay. Um, I have a very specific question. I'm just curious about how you uh, calculate the time for, like, if a bus comes every 20 minutes, what does mm. that look like in terms of how it maps out onto the map? Uh, okay. So, um, GTFS uh, doesn't say if a, a subway, if a bus or subway comes every five minutes, but it provides exact times that it comes, right? So because I know the exact times, um, it's easy. Like I can say with confidence, uh, line one in Paris, uh, 543, yeah. So if I sign onto this map at like midnight, it would be a totally different map? Um, yeah, so actually Ooh. that's an interesting, I want to show, um, this. So someone suggested um, to make an animation. Oh, um, I have to share a new window. <laughs> so someone suggested to make an animation for each possible time um, because my map works at times, right? So um, I'll start it right now. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. So for, um, what's cool is you see it's like sort of beating is because at 6 a.m., line one runs every three minutes, so it beats every three minutes, right? Um, another cool thing is, like, this sort of beats every 15 minutes, which is also the frequency of the up press. Um, and, for example, this go train, it, it's less, it, like, beats slower. It's also the frequency of the go train. And so, for example, at 11 a.m., um, like, it's beating way faster because now line one runs more frequently. Um, like if I go um, down, then we are able to see like the night bus uh, system in Toronto. So these are what um, Toronto's night bus is available at um, 2 a.m. Is this on your website? Uh, it's like it. private. Um, you can share it in the Slack. It's like. <laughs> um, it's on this. I haven't posted anywhere though. <laughs> But yeah, so I just want to do another demo. For example, like at 3.29 a.m., then instead of line one, we have bus um, 3.20 and 3.30 for each, right? For example, here too. Um, what's cool is if you go to Vancouver, then you see which Vancouver night buses are there. Um, and New York City is also interesting um, because New York City has 24-hour public transit. Right, and so which is why we see don't see that much of a difference. Um, yeah. Thank you. This is <laughs> so cool. Uh, there's a, there was another question online or two, kid. 
Yes, there are. Um, we have another question from Curtis who asked, was it stated that Python and Rust were used? What else was used to create this map? Yeah, so um, Rust was used to uh, calculate, like do the breadth first search to calculate the uh, access times for all roads. Um, Python was used to uh, sort of do some minor processing tasks and uh, JavaScript was used to render um, each each colored road onto this map. So JavaScript was used to render each line, basically, each line here. I think, uh, was it John that had a question online, Keith? Um, I think so, John. Uh, yeah, I just wondered how you were hand handling the, uh, the the question of the stops because I noticed that during the animation, the uh, the go trains were animated as though they were a continuous line, but they're only like between between Long Branch, which is the far west port point of the city, uh, on the Lakeshore line, and uh, and Union. There are actually only uh, three stops. Long Branch, um, Mimico, and Union. So, I was just wondering if the uh, if the program, if the program was was built to assume that the 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 line was continuous, or whether I was just missing something, and there actually were like flashing points of uh, of of stops there that I that I missed. Um. So I'm not too familiar with. Um, Toronto geography, but basically, um, the points that the go train reaches are colored yellow because it's very fast, right? And uh -huh. other, at other points, you can also use local buses like My Way or Brampton Transit right. to access the points in the middle, which is why the points in the middle, for example, here are colored less yellow than the points at the specific stops at, at Long Branch. Yep. Okay, I see it now. Thank you. Uh, we, we've got still a couple more questions. So anything in the room? Okay. Um, is there opportunity to co-create this with you? It seems like a lot for one person. Uh, could it work like way so you know, where people are doing their research for you or is there ways to help you? So uh, uh, very quickly, the question is, uh, I think a bit of how to get involved or could you do this in a bit of a crowdsourced way, like ways? Mm. Um, so I originally developed this sort of as a programming project too, because I'm a CS student. Um, so I, I built this entirely on my own, but there were some, uh, after I posted it to Hacker News and there were some really helpful people who uh, um, <laughs> like pointed out problems with the project, which uh, I appreciate very much. Um, as for ways to help, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if the code is too readable, <laughs> um, but yeah, I would appreciate like any ideas or um, if you are actually willing to implement it yourself, that would be lovely too. Yeah, it's fully open source. You can pitch it as a project, see if anyone wants to know. <laughs> um, any other questions online, Q? Uh, Curtis asks, what is used to host it? Mm, um, so it's hosted on a very cheap um, Google uh, Cloud ARM instance. Um, I'm also using Cloudflare um, to cache some of the static files because um, like the road tiles are static and they're very like demanding um, because we have to store them for every single zoom, which is why when I zoom in or out, um, sometimes there's like a, a loading spinner because it's loading new files. So Cloudflare is very helpful with this um, and they also have a very generous free tier. Uh, maybe one more question in the room, and we'll go on here. So when you load the transit data, is it coming directly to your server or here? So, um, to the, what do you mean uh, transit data? The, the, like the tri and transit uh, schedules yeah. of each uh, agency, right? Yeah. You download it that real time. So no, so um, because the schedules don't change that much, well, I'm downloading them once at the server. And then the only thing that the uh, browser gets is the colors for each row, basically. Right. So the browser just knows, it doesn't know about like times, it just knows the colors, right? And every time like I'm out, for example, calculating the routes is also done in the backend. Um, so the browser only knows like draw this curved line. 